Okay, I'm going to talk about narcissist cults and cult-like environments uh, and cults, families of groups of people such as narcissistic cults, cult-like families, narcissistic um, cult work environments, narcissistic religious groups, and uh, yeah, nar narcissistic cult-like groups, whether that be in a family environment situation, work type situation, any work type situation, in, in a school, in an office, um, you know, any any building, whether it, it can be any any work situation at all. Um obviously there's sort of narcissistic religious cult like environments which is a big thing and uh cult cult family situations so if you're cu a curious cat welcome to my channel i am curious ali kit kat and um i have been writing a little bit here and there about narcissistic abuse um and also I, I spoke about it before on my other channel ages ago much lower down but that is now evolved into a completely different channel so my um curious alley cats channel this one is going to be the main channel where i talk about topics such as narcissism and other topics which i will go into and i have gone into on other videos but today it's about narcissism narcissistic abuse and narcissistic abuse within cults like um, environments such as narcissistic families workplaces religious places etc etc so um, yes, you do have um, narcissists, um, individuals, but these individuals often operate in cult-like environment or setting. So, obviously, there are um, cults, actual cult cults, big or small, which do have narcissistic behaviours in them including involved like it within religious uh groups whatever religious groups that might be so i'm not saying that all religious groups are um you know based or revolt revolving around that kind of extreme extreme narcissism but that is definitely a thing that can go on and definitely within cults it does go on and people feel like they need to belong to a group and sometimes they get caught up in cults where they're either born in these kind of environments or they end up in them for whatever reason. That may be no judgment who has been in a cult who, or who is in a cult. But personally, I would never touch it with a barge pole. And so, yeah, there is actual cults which do have narcissistic leaders and their wing men and women enablers and flying monkeys now the term flying monkeys 
was taken from the movie that we a lot of us have watched the, the book the movie the wizard of oz where that movie is interesting because it has a lot of narcissistic and a lot of uh dy dynamics in that movie where you know the wicked witch does have her flying monkeys that do her work for her and they go around um terrorizing dorothy and her friends but even the other characters in the movie dorothy and her friends the tin man the scarecrow uh um, the lion, cowardly lion, Toto. Um, they all have a part to play, but that would be a separate conversation, uh, a separate topic talking about the details of The Wizard of Oz, one and two even. Um, but maybe we'll go into the book and the movie another day if you would like. But my main point is, is the term flying monkeys who are often described as narcissistic enablers because they are the people who do a lot of the dirty work for the narcissist or the main narcissist or the main narcissists in cult-like families, work environments, etc. And this is something more common than people realise in actual a lot of family situations and dynamics and work situations and dynamics and all narcissists have flying monkeys or enablers to help them be as to get away with things to get away with their cunning behaviour. Now, these flying num monkeys and enablers, some of them are aware of the narcissist's behaviour and they are enabling the narcissist with their behaviour for whatever reason that might be. Then there'll be other people who are unaware flying monkeys or enablers. But um if you so happen to be caught up and realize because a lot of people um who haven't um experienced narcissistic abuse or family dynamics will not pick up easily especially at the beginning they will not be aware of the dynamics of these cult-like behaviors through the narcissists um, and families so um, you'll have a family situation or in a work environment where there's a group of people in these families and work environments where it's extremely toxic and it might or might not seem like that at the beginning it depends on how much is obvious if you were to first get involved in these families or um, workplaces um, in some cases some people become aware of this due to the fact that they could actually have been born into these kind of environments in which they may be siblings or not siblings and what often happens when there is siblings you could have a narcissist parents in family situations where there is a narcissist leader mother or father of the cult like dynamic where there is brainwashing narcissistic hypnosis um and then there will be if there's say two children in this environment usually they there would be a golden child and a scapegoat or a black sheep and we can go into that on another day even more but like or 
there'll be both the parents are both narcissists. They could be the same type of narcissist or different types. You could have one parent who's an overt narcissist and the other per parent who is a covert narcissist. Or both coverts. Or both overt. Or malignant. Or any other narcissist. It depends. Or you could have one parent who is a narcissist and another parent who is an empath. Either way, in family situations, you will realise, no matter how big or small the family is, these narcissist family cult-like environments are cults they are actual cult, 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 cults and they all have their flying monkeys enablers um, and sources of supply in ranking to highest sources of supply being uh, their, their partner for example and then their children and so on and so on even the pets become narcissistic supply. The cat, the dog, the goldfish, the dragon, whatever it is. Um, and these environments are really dangerous if you end up in a toxic workplace who is operating from an, a narcissistic cult-like, cult where there is narcissistic leaders, whether it's the boss, the manager who's the actual narcissist or somebody else in that workplace it doesn't have to be the, the actual boss or the manager or the owner it could come from another person who's close close to, to the boss or the manager it doesn't have to be the top top person who's the narcissist or it could be several of them or even in fact all of them and if you find yourself interacting or end up working in these environments or indeed in these family environments of narcissistic cults, um, what happens is there is a deep, deep, and you, you will not realise this at first unless you are aware of it, what's going on, is that there is a deep, manipulation, deception, uh, brainwashing and hypnosis going on where the narcissistic cult members are in fact brainwashing using a form of hypnosis, grooming their victims, yes, grooming, I will say, uh, manipulating everyone, playing at games, triangulating, gaslighting, blame shifting, playing victim, and all the sort of traits are being stirred around in the narcissistic household family dynamic pot or work environment cult like pot so ultimately the main narcissist in this group or the main two let's say whatever it could be one or two is the ultimate cult leader whether that's done in a covert way or not they are the cult, cult leaders and then the victims are the victims. And then there's the flying monkeys enablers. Now, as I said, that some people aren't aware that they're the narcissist flying monkeys and some people are aware. But in order for the narcissist to operate their cults the way they do and get away with many, many things, many, many, many manipulative things to get their own way, um, there are plenty of narcissistic enablers or flying monkeys that enable the narcissistic, narcissist's behaviour. 
Um, for example, this um, case of Gabby Petito and her boyfriend, Brian Lawn, La I don't know how to say his surname, but it's Laundry, I think, or Laundry. Laundry, I'll just say, because that's what I've heard people say the most, but I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong how to pronounce that. But I feel that what's going on with that, and I wanted to mention this before regarding the Chris Watts case, where um, Shannon Watts, who was murdered by Chris Watts, and her her two daughters, their two daughters, and she was also pregnant when she was murdered, and the way he disposed of all their bodies, um, and his family background is from a very narcissistic family cult-like background. His parents, especially his mother in this case, I allegedly, I'll say, because obviously this is just my opinions, but for example, um, I alle allegedly would, would say that, you know, he is from a background of a narcissistic cult. Now, whether some family members are aware of the cult leader, which I believe is the mother in this case, uh, maybe be the mother, allegedly. <laughs> some of the members may be enabling the narcissist, original narcissist, with their behaviours and Chris probably got away with a lot of things as a child growing up. And yeah, a lot of things would have gone down in that family narcissistic dynamic. And in that case, he could be a narcissist. In my opinion, I think he is one. He's a, he's a narcissist either psychopath or sociopathic, he's a psychopath. Um, and the same with Brian Laundrie. I believe he is a narcissist. Um, psychopath or sociopath, whatever, but he's a narcissist. And his parents seemingly look like they're enabling him and being his flying monkeys. Now, I don't know the dynamics, what goes on and what's said behind closed doors between these people when they were growing up. But I think that Brian would have been getting away with being a spoiled little brat from when he was a child and playing victim like he did to the, the cops the police when Gabby and him were pulled over, which I might go into more detail on another day if you want. But yes, and this is what I'm talking about with narcissistic family dynamics and enabling, in this case, his parents. Um, I feel, believe that they've enabled their son get away well to help him get away with murder now i don't know whether one or both his parents are narcissists because we haven't heard them talk they're keeping quiet at the moment maybe later on the down the line we'll see them getting we'll see footage of them being questioned about this whole tragic case um, that's going on now with Gab Gabby Petito's body was found and I say this in all due respect to the family and friends that I want to make awareness from the body the body footage from the police and what could have been going on behind the scenes 
with narcissistic family, um, cult-like um, dynamics, body language, all that kind of thing. Now, even though obviously they they look and behave and act like normal people to their families and friends, I don't know them at all. But though there would be a cult like there will be a uh group of flying monkeys aka enablers who have been helping brian and he i would allegedly say that he is a narcissist probably a narcissist psychopath if if he's murdered Gabby and maybe other people who knows it might come out later on down the line but I will be going into I might go into detail on the body um body cameras that were taken by the the police when they pulled over Brian and Gabby um and what's going on there because in my opinion, I believe that the police, schools, and a lot of places need educating on red flags of narcissistic abuse and the, the, the signs of what could be going on. Other than what's obvious to the naked eye, what's on the surface, because what's on the surface says one story how people behave outwardly and then there's the non-verbal communication which is extremely important and what could be really going on because narcissistic abuse is extremely isolating um It's extremely isolating it's extremely covert and nobody really would know what to look for and um one of the police sort of compared gabby to his wife or his ex-wife was which is extremely shocking that he did that just to be relatable more towards brian just because Yes, he had marks and scratches, but that would have been down to uh, some people would say reactive abuse. Maybe that that would have been the case, but I believe also it could be down to defence to get him to stop what he was doing to her because the 911 call clearly the man that phoned was like that gentleman was hitting the woman and I do believe that it was a premeditated um, alleg allegedly this is just my opinion not based on truth or fact it's just my opinion i allegedly would say i i think um that it's a premeditated murder and if brian um killed gabby that i do think there's more going on with the psychology behind him in being possibly a narcissist sociopath psychopath either one or the other depending on the whole background of him and i do believe he actually also could be um dealing with other mental illness i mean gabby probably uh possibly 
had been as well. She did say she had OCD, but the thing is, she was apologising from the very beginning. One red flag, huge red flag. Um, so many things happened and I might break it down, go into that another day. But I want to talk about there is such a thing as narcissistic cult-like families and toxic narcissistic work environments, whatever work that is. And if you find yourself and friendship groups, should I say, narcissistic friendship groups, whether that's work friendship groups or friendship groups in general or work friendship groups combined where you've got work friends who are also friends, which is another thing, a big, big, big thing if you find yourself dragged into a situation where you end up involved in these work-like situations and these types of friendship groups or family situations or religious um where you need to get out and have no contact from every single person to do with it every single person and no contact i did speak about no contact with a nar narcissist lower down but i could go into more detail with um, no contact with a narcissist and no contact with the narcissist's enablers and flying monkeys. I'm going to end it there. This is a long video, but um, I want to make awareness. My point, one of my points is, is that education within the police force regarding behaviours, body language and the way victims and narcissistic mindset and how narcissists behave so when you're pulling over people to not just assess what's going on on the surface and not to can be comparing your situation as a professional with you know your wife or your ex-wife or whoever you know ex husband, ex-wife or whoever that may be to not compare. I know it's relatable and you say things in the moment because you're only human but the thing is there needs to be more education on narcissistic red flags, narcissistic abuse and this education needs to happen in police environments, in work env environments in schools from I believe a young age and it should be done in a very professional way and that's not easy but I do believe it should happen so people can recognize if they could potentially be in a narcissistic relationship or in a narcissistic family environment work environment so on and so forth um, and gaslighting and being manipulated and reduced down so you're not in control of your own emotions and so that you can learn how to take back your power, your magic, um, go no contact and be free from these people that are masking, they're hiding behind a charming mask and in fact they're extremely dangerous and there's more and more of these people in the world these days okay i'm gonna leave it there but i'm curious alley cat and um yeah leave comments let me know what you think about narcissistic cult-like dynamics workplaces family environments friendship groups all these types of groups of people and uh, maybe some experiences you may have had in these types of groups cult-like narcissistic controlling manipulative groups uh, and your experiences regarding being in a family or a relationship or friendship with a narcissist and 
maybe your experiences if you've been involved with being pulled over by the police and maybe some some of you have been in situations like that similar to the Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry situation and she was isolated um, with him and that's another big red flag so yeah leave it there leave comments subscribe and bye